welcome to another vlog. If you can't hear me, it's because I might be, I'm being drowned out by glorious rain. That is so much needed. In my part of the world, we have been in drought for a long time. I don't think we're gonna have a sustained amount of rain, but there's this really heavy storm happening at the moment and it's just gorgeous to hear it on our roof. I love it. I'm so excited. There's gonna be a lot of very happy people around my part of the world. Anyway, this is my vlog about reading A Superior Spectre by Angela Meyer. I am reading the whole of the Readings Prize 2019 long list and I'm so lucky to be reading it with um, two Aussies in Jacqueline from Six Minutes for Me and Julia from Julia's Book Time and an adopted Aussie in Simon Savage. So the four of us are going to work our way through the long list and I'm just so thrilled to be able to share my thoughts with them and I thought I would also share my thoughts with you so I like doing that. I don't know anything about this book. Oh. I don't know if this is my kind of book. This guy's dying and he goes to remote Scotland and he has experimental tech that allows him to the, enter the mind of someone in the past. He can only use it three times, but Jeff ignores this advice. So then we travel back to the 1860s and meet Lenora. So obviously he moves into Lenora's head into her mind and stuff goes down. Oh dear, I shouldn't have read the blurb. I should have gone in blind. I'm not a real kind of out of the box reality kind of, oh, what is this called? I don't even really know. It's not sci-fi, is it? It's just never would happen. So, I don't know. I'm not really into those books. But anyway, I am now because I've got to read it. So, wish me luck on this one. I'm going to settle down in my little reading chair here. With the rain, I hope you've heard all of that. And um, I'll let you know what I think after part one. Wish me luck! <laughs> I'm filming this in my bathroom. Why you ask? Well, it's 3 a.m. Yes, my son got scared in the dark or something and called out and been awake since 1.30 because that's what mums do, huh? I thought I'd check in because I just finished the first part of A Superior Spectre by Angela Meyer. Hmm. I, like I said to my buddies, I don't do well with text futuristic stuff and this is all got robots in it and it's got this time traveling device and it's all a little bit bizarre and I struggled with the first part because it, there was a lot of I guess a lot of setting up that I found setting up of the characters which I found disjointed so I'm not particularly like as I was reading it, I wasn't enjoying it and I, you know, I was pushing through in a way, um, which isn't, which isn't good. But the last part of this first, like the last chapter kind of put some context to what I just read. So I wouldn't say that that was well done because I, I was so kind of out of it and confused in that first part that I was enjoying it. But now that I know some things at the end, I was like, oh, okay, that's why that happened. That's why this was presented to me in that way. So I wouldn't say that was clever. It was, it was just, I'm glad that that was there. So yeah, it's, it's kind of, it switches between perspective between the woman or well, the man, Jeff, who is in the future and who is unwell and who is dealing with his own stuff. I can't talk too much about it because I don't want to spoil it for you. But he's dealing with his own stuff. And then he puts this time traveling device in his mouth. Yeah. 
and then he goes back into the mind of a woman who's in like the late 1800s or something and she's you know meeting a guy and her father just got remarried and like all of this stuff and she's got a job at this inn and so all of this stuff's going down for her and yeah he's kind of presenting her to us which took me a while to understand anyway part one for me was not fabulous but we might but I'm yeah I, I, I think it was not fabulous because I just didn't understand and now I've kind of got a grasp on it I think I'll move into part two I'm a little bit sleepy but not too much so I might go back out to my little reading chair and um, read part two it's another 70 pages where am I going to get to that little yellow mark um, yeah see if I can knock over part two and then go back to sleep <gasps> my goodness it's gonna be a long day otherwise okay just wanted to share my thoughts as I had them in my head because we all know that my thoughts fly out pretty quickly okay there you go there's my bathroom I'll see you hello, later. Hello, hello, it's Wednesday afternoon and I'm here to check in on part two of A Superior Spectre. <sighs> not loving it, not loving it, not hating it, but I'm, I'm more on that side than I am on the loving side. Um, we're now seeing the influence that Jeff has on the woman whose mind he keeps jumping into with this technology and how he's starting to, she's starting to see images from his point of view and he's starting to kind of influence her mind a bit. I am struggling with the selfishness of that. I am also struggling with the way that he's influencing her mind and I'm not going to get into that because that's for you guys to enjoy yourselves and decide on yourselves, but I just think it's unnecessary and I don't, I don't like it. The writing's very easy to read. I'm still finding that. I'm flying through the pages. Um, but I'm not feeling compelled to turn them. <laughs> I'm going to finish this tonight because I want to do that and keep up the pace with my fellow buddy readers, two of whom have already finished this book. So I kind of want to just kind of get it done. That's where I'm at. Oh, that's not a good place to be with a book, is it? That makes it sound bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's just not my type of book. That's what it is, I think. I think it really isn't my type of book. I wouldn't have picked it up if it wasn't for all of this, if it wasn't for being on the long list and um, reading it with my buddies. So, but that's okay. You have to kind of open yourself up to new ideas in some way and, and maybe sometimes it'll pay off. And I, I'm only halfway through the book. So come on now, Natalie. Okay, I'm going to cut it some slack. I'm going to sit down. I've still got some time without children. So try and knock over next part. I will chat to you when I've done that. Maybe things will have turned around. You never know. I hope so. I really okay, do. Maybe up as five or something and I finished part three. It didn't get any better for me. Not at all. Um, everything's kind of slipped away and the whole cool technology side of it, that's gone. It's, it's sort of talking about life in Scotland as a woman, not really riveting. Um, in terms of him going into her thoughts, he's kind of taking over her thoughts and all that sort of stuff, still in the same demoralizing way. Um, but now there's just more questions than answers. And when things are cropping up, like she knows that this person taking over her thoughts or that the vision she's seeing belonged to a male and belonged to someone from Australia. And I don't know how she got to that. Like that's just one small example of like, when I read it, I go, well, how does she know that? So that keeps cropping up a lot. The connection between Jeff and Lenora, so Jeff in the future, and he's inhabiting Lenora's mind back in the 1800s, it's, it's a really tenuous link now. Like, it's not solid. Nobody's, he's just kind of going about his day, still inhabiting her mind and controlling her thoughts, but he's not reflecting on what he's doing at all. He's just kind of being in his life. Being in, he's just a selfish, horrible character. I'm still not feeling anything for anybody. Something big just went down for Lenora. D whatever. Like, that's where I'm at. Meh. Anyway, I've just got another 40 pages to go. So I'm going to read that now. And I'll, I'll come together with something a little more cohesive at the end. Maybe 
maybe things will be pulled together at the end. Who knows? Such a shame. Okay, I'll just keep reading. I'll talk to you in a sec. Hey, I finished it. It's two stars. That's what I'm feeling. The ending just didn't help at all. The main problem I have is that there's no real connection between the two of them. He is so selfish and horrible that he doesn't reflect on what he's doing to this woman. And she, being in that time, just does not know what's happening to her. And because he misuses this device, he it ultimately leads to her not being in a very good place. The influences he has um, on her reflect his own, the thing that he's most consumed with in his life. And, you know, you can find that out for yourself if you dare pick this book up, but it's not a very nice thing. You hate him for it and then you hate that he is influencing her in a way that she doesn't really understand because of his own desires. It's not cool. It's, it's, there's just, like I said before, there's a lot going on that has no answers. It, there were things in there that just, I didn't think added to the story, but were quite crude. I, it just totally wasn't developed for me. I, yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. So two stars. So yeah, two stars. So I have read one other book, which is um, on the long list for the readings prize, which is Inappropriation, and I gave that three stars. So that one's ahead. It, I mean, it doesn't take much. This has to be at the bottom of the list. And if this wins, oh my goodness. I, I'll have to, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. It'll be a tense night, let me tell you. <laughs> That's the end of this little vlog, this little kind of half review vlog. Um, sorry it wasn't a much nicer book but you came along for the ride with me and yeah I will um, be doing little review vlogs for all of the books on the long list so I'll see you in the next one okay guys bye